sediment, and principles of sediment control in a forestry context. The intent of this video is to provide a training aid for those working in forestry and the natural resources sector in general. Funding for its development was provided through the BC Timber Sales Membership Agreement. This training aid is intended for equipment operators, construction contractors, field supervisors, environmental monitors and planners. When it comes to forestry and understanding the sources of sediment, many research articles have stated the primary source of sediment in the forest environment is from exposed soils within the road prism, including the road surface. Water management. Water management is at the root of erosion control and sediment containment. Containing and diverting sediment laden water provides some control over the location of sedimentation. Best management practices have been developed for forestry operations, one of which will be presented at the end of this presentation. Section 1 Sediment Preventing sediment from reaching a watercourse or community water intake is vital to protecting aquatic habitat and drinking water. It's important to know the rate of settlement by soil texture to aid in choice of management strategy, understand turbidity and turbidity levels, and to know the effect of sediment for fish and drinking water. Deposition or settlement by soil type. It's important to identify the predominant soil texture at the work site and to plan for appropriate sediment management given the type of soil at the work site. You can see in this graph that clays require a longer time in detention to settle than silts and sands. Clays can take up to close to six hours to settle one centimeter through water, whereas sands will settle within seconds. Measuring sediment levels. Turbidity is a measure of the relative clarity or cloudiness of water. Turbidity is measured in Nephilometric Turbidity Units, or NTU, which is an optical measurement of water's ability to scatter and absorb light. Turbidity levels range from less than 1 NTU to more than 1000 NTU. Actual Total Suspended Solids TSS, are measured as milligrams of material per liter of water. Milligrams per liter. NTU is easily measured in the field and is a surrogate for total suspended solids. Turbidity levels and their impacts. Higher levels of turbidity result in higher levels of total suspended solids. Fish can be affected by high levels of turbidity. It can cause damage to their gills. It can be difficult to forage for food and clean spawning gravel can become smothered and infilled. Target levels are established for both aquatic habitat and drinking water. Drinking water targets NTU to be less than one. The effects of turbidity on sensitive fish over time are shown in the colored boxes. Less than five NTU is not impaired. Five to 20 NTU is slightly impaired. 20 to 200 NTU is moderately impaired and greater than 200 NTU is severely impaired. The bottom picture shows examples of various NTU levels. Section 2. Principles of Sediment Management Containing, collecting and diverting sediment laden water are primary methods to managing sedimentation. It's important to know effective sediment containment and diversion techniques to be familiar with installation procedures and to know the BMPs and to perform necessary maintenance. Check structures and containment options. Check structures intercept ditch or sheet flow and promote deposition of sediment. Sediment ponds collect source flows in an excavated depression whereas a geotextile fence can contain surface flows at grade. While in place and during use, sediment traps require maintenance for structure integrity and removal of accumulated sediment. Diverted and positive surface flows. Above ground diversion structures direct flow to preferred sites where sediment can deposit, such as the forest floor. Rolling grades 
and crowned, insloped, or outsloped road surfaces provide positive flow off the road. Offtake ditches or ditch turnouts deliver sediment laden water onto the forest floor and are commonly constructed near water course crossings. Maintenance and sediment control. Grading should leave the road surface crowned and without greater berms along the road edge. Sediment traps should be cleaned and repaired if necessary. And when a road is well maintained, heavy hauling will occur without delays and improved cycle times. In summary, we've touched on how water management is key when managing for sediment. Understanding soil texture and the different settlement rates. We've touched on turbidity and its impacts and how it's measured in NTUs. We've looked at check structures and containment features, diversion and forced flows, and lastly, the importance of maintenance. And I can't stress enough greater berms and their negative impacts. We've tied this all together, understanding that water management is at the core of both erosion control and sediment containment. Resources available. The FP Innovations Guide Erosion and Sediment Control Practices for Forest Roads and Stream Crossings, a Practical Operations Guide, is available as Advantage Volume 9, Number 5. The guide provides detailed description of the principles and practices of erosion prevention and sediment containment. Best management practices targeted at sections of the road prism, such as the road surface, a cut slope, or a bridge and culvert crossings, are all presented within the guide. An additional video has also been prepared targeted at principles of erosion prevention. Thank you for your time today.